Gen 7 makes configuring your event's timing settings fast and easy. In this video, we will go over the timing settings available in the Gen 7 software. To begin, navigate to the settings screen, then click on the timing tab. This is where you will be able to adjust the timing settings to suit your meet. The primary finish for near and far ends allows you to set whether the system will use touchpads or push buttons as the primary mode to finish a race. The near and far ends can be set independently. When using only push buttons, the lanes will only record the final time and not record split times. As an option when using push buttons, you can promote the inputs so that the physical pad input registers as button A, physical button A registers as button B, and so on. This allows allows you to run a two-button meet with a single cable harness. In the default start end section, even and odd length races can be set to accept a start input on either the near or far end of the pool. Set this prior to loading events from your meet management software. Single events can be altered in the session screen if needed. Here you can set if you would like backstroke start reaction enabled or disabled, and set if you would like it disabled or enabled only for backstroke events. If you are using backstroke start devices or performing flyover starts, you may want to disable backstroke start reaction since extra touchpad hits at the start might skew the data. Enabling the missed pad warning will notify the operator of potential missed touches or that an athlete may be taking a long time or be off course. Timing resolution allows you to set the number of places after the decimal that times are recorded. Most governing bodies require the timing resolution be set to hundredths. If this setting is changed, only races that have not been run will be affected. Start Reaction window sets the time window to record start reaction times using RJPs for starting block starts and touch pads for in-water starts. Here is where you can set the near end and far end pad delays. After a touch, the pad will not register another touch during the delay. With Gen 7, unlike previous CTS timers, the scoreboard split delay is a separate setting in the scoreboard screen and is not connected to the pad delay. The relay judging interval sets the window, positive and negative, around the touchpad signal that a signal from a relay judging platform will be considered valid. This is the window of time in a relay between the incoming swimmer's touch and the next swimmer's departure. This is where the acceptable range between pad and backup times to be considered valid is set. Any difference in the times outside of the set range will be considered suspect and flagged as such on the main screen. Some settings cannot be changed while a race is running. The Gen 7 will re-enable the ability to change these settings once the race has been reset. For more information about the Gen 7 system, check out our other videos or see our website for more details.